Hello everyone, welcome in Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah. The fall festivals have begun. Yes, we finally officially ticked into fall um, or autumn as most of the world calls it and fall because you know, America. But um, Livonia, which is a little town that's like the next town over from where we live, had their fall festival, which they do, I think it's on the third Saturday of the month is how that falls. Y'all, it was a beautiful day for it. The morning started off in the 50s and then it was like in the low 80s by the afternoon. It wasn't super hot, but the sun really made it warm. I got a little bit of sun. I did have some sunscreen on my face, so I've only got a little bit of red, mostly where um, I deal with my eczema stuff around my eyes, uh, but I was dressed for fall. Yes, I was. If you saw my video for my Saturday vloggy thing, that's what I was wearing. Only I also had my hair up um, in a big scrunchie that I had made and I had some matching um, earrings on with it. So yes, it was a beautiful day. We go for the festival food and just to see all, I like to see all the cool crafts and stuff, but there was so much neat stuff this year. Um, you may have seen in the thumbnail, this, this is a bookmark, by the way, uh, about the butterfly, the, the monarch butterfly. And there is something called the monarchjointventure.org. And they're trying to make more um, monarch places to eat and stop because the, the population has gone down so much. If you know anything about butterflies and the monarchs especially, that is very, very true. And there's a lot of information on there. Plus I got a little flyer. They had a little setup there, which I thought was super cool. Um, just like this little mesh basket thing that you could look down into. And there were caterpillars in there. Um, and mostly for the kids to watch because that they do this like in conjunction with an elementary school in the area as well. But you know, adults could come by and like be fascinated too. But while we were there, while some other, some little kids were there, um, one of the caterpillars shed its outer skin and emerged with a different, like, not like a slightly different set of colors. And we could see the difference, but by the time we came around, I was like, oh yeah, this one is you know, darker, really cool looking. They were all fascinating. Um, but they were just munching on plants and we got this. Uh, sponsored by the Georgia DOT, actually. It's a wildflower mix. And DOT, Department of Transportation. Yeah, because on a lot of Georgia state-type highways, like divided highways, the middle median, they've been putting wildflowers and stuff and trying not to mow. They actually put up signs, do not mow, because they're trying to provide flowers and, you know, ways for pollinators to get some extra mojo. And they were giving out these seeds and it says right on them plants basically plant these in october so i'll find a place in a sunny spot where we are and see what i can do outside because <laughs> i love helping out the pollinators plus that is super cool yeah three packs of seeds and it says this pack will uh treat a 10 square foot area treat plant whatever you know what i'm talking about so I think that's very, very cool that the Georgia DOT did this. And that little town is actually going to be putting up like a butterfly, sort of a sanctuary, a butterfly in an area where they're planting stuff just for the butterflies and yeah, not disturbing it and trying to leave it. So, so you know, any butterflies that are migrating, they got a place to stop in Livonia. And the kids are involved with it too, which I think is very cool. Teach them young, teach them young, but very fun, super awesome lady that was actually there talking about it. Um, I don't know if she's a teacher or if she works at the local library, which in the little town of Livonia, there's a library that I've driven past like a zillion times, but never gone in there. It is an actual Carnegie library. Yeah, it's a small one though. But the outside is beautiful. I just haven't managed to be down there at a time when they're open and I have time to go in, you know, the usual problems with working all the time. But that was very, very cool. And that was something that didn't cost anything. I have lots that cost stuff, though. Um, at the end, there will be a slideshow of um, 
close-ups of business cards and stuff so you can see the businesses that I chose to support this year while I was there because I showed some of it in my thumbnail too. Uh, one business that I chose to support, <clears throat> which I support her all year round when I have a chance to, uh, Mandy's Manny's. She does Color Street. She's local. She's like another town over, um, but she can do her stuff online. She will actually ship them to you because her stuff is easy to ship, y'all, because it comes in these little cards and they go very nicely through the mail. And if you're not familiar with Color Street, it's real nail polish that you clean your nails really well and you do like a little swipe with an alcohol pad to make sure they're good and dry. You put your um, nail polish on it, the nail polish strip, stretch it out over it, file off the end, you're done. There's no drying time. It's actually really cool. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, the one that I really wanted, she did not have with her. She had it on order. And she says, it'll probably be in my mailbox when I get home this afternoon. <laughs> you know, that, that's how things work. And that's okay. So I went ahead. She had to buy three, get one free. So I went ahead and bought three. I said, if you'll just send that one to me when you get it, that would be awesome. It's a glow-in-the-dark skull Halloween theme. Because, of course, it is. Y'all know me, right? But these are the other colors that I chose. Look at that. Love the like animal sort of a leopardy print kind of deal with the glitter. Because of course I do. Look what I'm wearing. I mean, it's not just because it's, a, it, I've loved animal prints my whole life. It's not just because I'm a middle-aged woman. Although that might influence it, I guess. But I love it. And, and I've used this stuff before. And it really does, even on my nails where I tear up a manicure in like four seconds flat, these last a good while. Now these, I got to go together. And let me explain that. These ones down here, any place you see white or the, you know, the background color of the thing, they're clear. And I don't know if you saw, let me zoom it way up close for you here. Hopefully you can see the, the patterns. They're kitties and puppies. Oh my gosh. Yes, kitties and puppies. And I thought they were really cute. And I'm going to layer them on top of this. Or I might layer them just on top of a basic color of nail polish that I have. And she she even told me, she says, um, the ones that are the special ones, like ombres and, you know, glittery and stuff like that, they last longer than just the basic colors. So, yeah, and these last, like, two weeks for me. That's saying something. You can get pedicure ones, too. I, I can't do anything with my own toes. I gave up on that a long time ago, but she, uh, someone was in there who was like, yeah, I, I've got these on my toes right now. These have been on here for a month. So you can do those too, but I think it's super cool. It's fun. Yeah. It's kind of like an MLM thing. You don't have to join and do anything. I just, she puts on specials sometimes and I order some and she sends them to me and it's very cool. And this says lasts up to 10 days. I have found that it'll last longer than that. And this little flyer tells you about, you know, what they are and how to do it. You get a little flyer. If, basically, these are the instructions. Oh, and look at some of the colors they have. This is just, yeah, they're a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. And she's a sweetheart. That's why I choose to support her as my color street person. Uh, we got food. Oh, yes. Did we get food? We went to one place that I, I have a picture of the menu. It was it was a, the menu board that was up uh, because the hubby was there and he was sitting in the shade because the sun is just not a good thing. So I was like, dude, you sit over there. I'll go get in line. No big deal. So I went over there first, took a picture of the menu. Okay, what do you want? Um, what was it called? It's in the picture at the end. I had a pork barbecue sandwich. Generous with the portions. Yes. He had the brisket sandwich, barbecue sandwich. Mm-hmm. Yummy. We saw people coming out of there with uh, pork nachos or brisket nachos as well. Looked really, really good. So that was wonderful. Also, after we had been walking around like for several hours and gotten kind of hot, we were heading back towards where we could head back to, to the Twuck. And we um, was like, oh, we need something to drink. Don't want anything carbonated. This one little booth, they had boiled peanuts and they had pineapple lemonade I was skeptical at first and then I tried it I drank two cups like big you know cups hubby had two cups 
It was delicious. I never thought of putting lemonade with pineapple. The pineapple is so sweet that it takes down the tartness of the lemonade, but you still get some of that lemon flavor. It was delicious. It was just so stinking delicious. Uh, so yeah, that's something I'm going to try to find a less sugary version of because that was full on sugar. I totally took another shot while I was drinking that because sugary um, beverages really raised my blood sugar. So it was like, ah, yes, let me, you know, shoot the leg. But it was delicious. It was so good, so good. But they had a lot of different foods there. They had one of the a shaved ice uh, truck was there. You could get, you know, just like any festival, you can get like deep fried anything, deep fried Oreos, deep fried Twinkies. Um, you could also get, uh, funnel cakes. I never did get a funnel cake. The line was always too long. I love funnel cakes. I'm just, you know, I shouldn't have them, but I do love them. If you're not familiar with a funnel cake, I want you to just think of a nice pancake batter that they'll usually stick a, a mold in the middle of the oil. It's deep fried. It's deep fried. We're in the South, honey. It's deep fried. Okay. Um, and then you like pour that batter into it over and over again, over and around and blah, blah, blah. And then it fries and you flip it and then you cover it with more powdered sugar than exists on the earth um and it's yummy <laughs> it's, it's really good or you can do cinnamon and sugar or whatever most people just do powdered sugar give me all the things you know they have uh there was a place that I took a picture of like their menu board and I posted it I did not get to try the food um Cuban food I was like surprised I'm gonna have to look it up and see if they have a restaurant somewhere up here some of the food booths are run by like nonprofits, like local nonprofits. some of the food groups are run by people that they just do catering and stuff and they just come down there and boom there were like four different barbecue places there yes barbecue mm. love it love it there are lots of different art and arts and craftsy places there was one crochet booth there and I've seen her there plenty of times before um, super sweet lady I went in there, I was chit-chatting with her and admiring her work because she does beautiful work. And um, I showed her my earrings, which by the way, I'm not wearing them right now. I'm not wearing any earrings right now, but they were Lisa Ladybird Love's um, hanky earrings, the hanky stitch markers that I wear for earrings because they're on Sterling Silver Leverbacks, because why not? Um, but they matched my um, scrunchie that I had. So that's what I wore. And she thought that was so cool. She's like, oh, if you just need a stitch marker, you just, you know. <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, I usually just use basic stitch markers. I said, but, I mean, that shows the world how much I love yarn, you know. And <laughs> we talked about that a bit. And, uh, you know, we just chit-chatted about crochet and stuff. And I told her I really admired her work. And uh, she must crochet like 24 hours a day to get all the stuff done that she had there at that booth. Whoa. People are mostly a lot faster than I am. I am super slow. But uh, yeah, fun chatting with her, fun chatting with pretty much everybody there. That's one thing about being in sort of a small town like this, especially if you go to a festival. Most people are super friendly, give you a smile. Oh, I got to taste some honey. And no, honey is not just like, oh, you've never had honey before. I've always had, I've had plenty of honey in my life. We have a local place and it was from the local place that's literally you know, half a mile as the crow flies from my house. Um, it's uh, Farm 328 and they do local honey there as well as grow a lot of, you know, other stuff. But they had a variety, a couple of varieties of honey that I had not tried before. Um, one was ghost pepper. They had some other honeys there too that I knew were already nice and sweet. So I decided, you know what? And they give you the little plastic spoon you could squeeze this stuff into. And I tasted it. I'm thinking, well, that's just honey. And then it hit. Then it was like, boom, ghost pepper, baby. It wasn't too bad because you had that sweetness to help counteract it. But boy, it was there. It, it, it delayed though. Snuck up on you. Yeah, it was really good though. It was very tasty. Um... And then I went for some of the citrus honey <laughs> to kind of help balance that out a little bit. But it was really good. Uh, if you get a chance to go to a local festival, do it. Um, even if nothing else, people will let you sample things. You can talk to people. Um, you know, budget out some money to spend a little bit of money. Like, like pick something small that you can help support a local person. That's what I find fun. I did buy two other things, two things when I was there. These two things. Two different vendors. This I purchased from a vendor that I had purchased from before. Um, she and her hubby go there pretty much every year. They, they drive from a small town in South Carolina. 
beautiful bracelets. This is one of their more basic ones. Let's see if I can let you see that. I don't know how well those beads are going to show up. They are like a deep cobalt blue and there's like purple running through it, like marbleized. They're just so pretty. Could I make this myself? Yes, I know how to make jewelry, but I don't have beads like this and I wouldn't want to try to source them, you know, being someone who doesn't do that all the time. And they're awesome people. And this totally fits my hand. I love it. They had another set there that had some extra nice charms on it and stuff. Like one um, that was totally like supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. It was, uh, it had a charm on it that said, I can't breathe. And it was like, oh, right, right, right to the gut, you know. Um, but I just chose to get one of these because I love the colors. They are so gorgeous. This one, another booth, a woman came up from Riverdale, Georgia, which is, if you know anything about the North Georgia area, this is south of Atlanta, um, south of the Atlanta airport, which is quite a haul to come to our little tiny town. But this was in a section she had of men's beads. And her son had told her, Mom, no men are going to buy that bright blue bracelet because it was, you know, the other men's bracelet, they were like wooden beads type of stuff that, that you see guys wear bracelets of. So she, she said she was going to lie to her son and tell her that a man bought this. <laughs> but I have really big hands. And ta-da! Look at... I don't... Oh, I hope... I wish that you could see the sparkle. I don't know how well it's going to show up. They are like sparkles that you could stare into for a while and just kind of get lost. I love these beads. They're so pretty. And I liked it. Um, let's see. This was 15 this was 12 and they had other sales going on and stuff. And I'm happy to support small businesses. I do what I can. I also picked up a business card for a place that is probably a mile from us as the crow flies, maybe, maybe a mile and a half, um, that does grass fed beef and the cows are just all walking around pasture. I mean, they're, you know, happy cows. And um, forest raised pork. Um, the meat prices, it's they're not bad. They are comparable to what you would pay going to like a Whole Foods and getting one of theirs. Their little store there is only open one day a week, but they don't do online ordering. But I did take a picture of the uh, the business cards. So you can go look at their website and look at their catalog and what they have. Um, just, you know, for giggles, if you, unless you live close enough that you want to drive up. Um, but yeah, we're going to see about some of our meat budget coming from them. Because A, it's a local business. They're trying to do things right. Um, you know, humanely uh, sourcing their meat, basically. They're, they're taking care of stuff themselves. And using all parts of the animal, wasting nothing. Um, super important. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff to be said about some small businesses. And if I can give my business to a small local business instead of a big corporate farm someplace else that's doing things in a shady way, I'm totally doing it. Totally doing it. So some of my meat budget will be going to that farm. Hamner's Farms. Like I said, the business card will be at the end in a little, little slideshow kind of deal. So anyway, we had a great time. Um... Got a lot of walking around done. Got to see a lot of dogs. A lot of people brought their dogs uh, because it's a dog friendly event as long as your pup's on a leash, you know, and everything from little teeny tiny dogs to big old pups, dude. <laughs> everything in between. Just really fun to see little puppers walking around because they were happy to be socializing. Um, so it's really cool to do that. And I got to hold a snake. Have not held a snake in a long, long time. Uh, this woman, and she was not a vendor or anything there. She just attended. She's local. Uh, she was there with her two kids. Older, you know, kids walking around. Her son, I don't know how old he was. But we saw him carrying the snake for a while. He was just very chill. Her daughter, though, that girl was a firecracker. Okay? She <laughs> was running around singing. I don't know what song she was singing. It's probably something modern on the radio that I don't know anything about. But she was singing, and she wanted everybody to know she was singing. She it was hilarious. Kind of loud. I'm glad we were outside, but it was hilarious. But they would they were walking around just kind of carrying the snake, looking at the booths and stuff. That, that's just their pet that they've had 
Matter of fact, she said that uh, she has had that snake since right around the time her daughter was born. It's about seven years. Um, same time. So the little girl has grown up with the snake. The, the, the son has grown up with the snake. And uh, very chill snake. Uh, ball python. And uh, his name is Casino because he's a little eight. So that's apparently his lucky number is eight. A little eight in his pattern, which is cool. But she's like, yeah, you can hold him. I'm like, awesome. And I got to hold him. And he like tried to go down into my pocketbook because he has a bag that he goes into when he wants to chill out. <laughs> he said, ooh, I found a bag. I was petting on him. And he was really cool and really chill and just like checking life out. Even with all the chaos and the noise around and just so much stuff going on, he was just like, all right, it's all good. But very cool. I'm like, 10 pound snake though. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, you think of a snake as being something small. Nay, nay. This was a 10 pound snake. Uh, <laughs> only about half the weight of my cat. I don't think my cat would like having a snake in the house though. She has a cat and they, she has to keep them. As long as she is there with them, the cat's like, I'll just ignore you. But if she's not in the room, the snake's out, the cat's out. The cat's like, uh-uh, I'm getting you now. So, yeah. But she takes care of that. <laughs> anyway, it was a great day. We had a wonderful Saturday. Just kind of spending the day out and about. Um, got a little bit of sun. I had sunscreen on, though. So I did. I did. I forgot to bring a hat, but, you know, it's all good. Um, there was enough shade there. Those are trees downtown. And... Along the sidewalks of the downtown, there are awnings, you know, in front of the stores and stuff. So you're able to just kind of, you know, park your butt in the shade if you want to for a while, which I did. But yeah, if you get a chance to go to any festivals, do it. The next one that I know about, that I straight up know that I'm going to, unless something stupid happens with the weather, is uh, the end of October. Uh, the one in Tacoa, Georgia. Their fall festival is always enormous. And it's a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to going to that too. So, yeah. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you spending this time with me. Me just rambling on about the festival because I had such a good time. And I hope to see you very, very soon. Bye, y'all.